How do I work on being happy while single? I'm 21 years old, and I've never had a boyfriend. At first, I was okay with my lack of partner because I simply didn't want one. Now that I want one, I'm finding it hard to cope with all the happy couples around me and my lack of suitor. It's become a nagging feeling in the back of my mind. I'm appreciate of the time I have to get to know myself, but I don't know how to get past this stage of feeling like I need a partner. Help. Reddit user 192850. Oh, boy. Man, I feel you, girl. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Man, I feel you, man slash girl. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's easy or, you know, theoretically, it's easy when you have decided that this is not something that you're interested in to be single or to, you know, be kind of passing up on opportunities. But as soon as you want to sort of turn on that feature of your life and then you aren't getting a result, it's it can feel frustrating or alienating or lonely or sad. Um, yeah, and it's a tough place to be once you've gotten to that place where you're like, I'm ready now. And then the universe just kind of isn't isn't suddenly miraculously delivering <laughs> in a sparkling right. tied up with a bow package exactly the thing that you have wanted it requires the cooperation of another person and uh, i think that's part of what makes it so exciting and appealing mm. is it's not something that you can determine all on your own yeah yeah so how can you be happy while single there's a circle here of things that you can control like what you think about to a degree um what you spend your time on what you invest energy into and um certain things will remind you of your singleness and in investing in them and certain things won't certain things you're very capable of doing all on your own and i would say just push your uh schedule more in the direction of things like raising plants or uh, getting a pet. I think like having something to love like that, that uh, you can control a pet. That's humane. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay to just keep it. And um, that may remove some of the desire or that like the pain of not having a boyfriend right now. Yeah, I really like what you said about uh, how being in a relationship re requires the cooperation of some someone else, because I feel like we live in such a self-directed, independence-oriented mm -hmm. culture. And I, I very much feel this in my own life of the areas of my life where I have to rely on other people to uh, do something on my behalf or, you know, cooperate or whatever I, I find those very frustrating and, you know, I've, I've been able to operate for a lot of my life and in a lot of domains very independently, like with relative success. Um, and I think that that's great because I think that the, the other side of the coin is people who don't know how to be alone, people who uh, can't do things without other people to motivate them or, um, you know, just to make it more exciting. And so I think that one of the things that this person said is that they've really appreciated the time that they have spent by themselves, learning about themselves, probably thinking about maybe what kind of relationship they would want. Um, and I do think that that work is incredibly important overall in the long term journey of finding someone that is a good match for you and also understanding how you operate within the context of a relationship and knowing your own behaviors, knowing your own emotions, those things are essential. Cause like I said, the, we tend to fixate on the thing that's the problem that we currently have, not, not appreciate the solutions that we've already found to the problems that other people have or, mm -hmm. you know, other, other circumstances. And so I think one way to increase your happiness around this is to actively focus on having gratitude for the, the pieces of the puzzle that you do have, uh, which is self-knowledge and independence, even when it feels in excess because you're wishing to share those with other people. Mm -hmm. um, I think also you can 
recognize what needs you can get met from a distributed network of friends mm -hmm. or coworkers, peers, mentors, and mentees even um, that are the types of interactions that you'd find fulfilling from a partner, from a, from a boyfriend specifically. Um, yeah. You know, being able to talk about your day just like without a, a point to it or something important having happened. Maybe that's something that you want from a boyfriend. Well, maybe you could find a friend or a family member that you want to do that with. Um, maybe it's hugs, cuddling, something physical, something sexual. Maybe there are people that you can do those things with that are not a boyfriend. Um, just recognizing that I think that it's a mistake or a, a potential problem in the uh, empowering women's advice that we give, which is like, be your own everything. Like, just do it for yourself. Because every person, man or woman, does need interactions with other people. I think that yeah. quarantine has been a reminder of that for many of us. Um, but yeah, we, we can't meet all of our own social needs. So no matter how far removed it is, whether it's just people on the internet or through the phone or somehow obscured, um, having feedback, feeling like somebody heard you and understood you and that is providing new ideas, uh, perspectives other than your own uh, different experience. That's all super important. And so make sure you're getting that even if not from boyfriends. And then, like Morgan said, find ways to be grateful for that. Those little chance conversations that you have. Anything surprising that comes from other people. Um, it's I like what you just said. And it <laughs> reminds me of the conversation we were just having literally before we started recording. Yeah. Where I was kind of... Uh, Coming to Rob with a really similar problem. Maybe that's why you picked this question. <laughs> that's why <laughs> I picked think? this question. Um, but yeah, I was I was saying that I really missed that feeling of kind of flirtation and chemistry from a new romantic interest. And Rob was trying to get me to distill down, like, well, what does that feel like? What are the elements of that? What what noises do you what make? Kind of What's your body you posture make, yeah. when you're when you're feeling that way? Um, and trying to get laser focused on well what actually is that little bite or that little element and what other ways can you put yourself into that kind of context or mode or mood um you know either with another person who who doesn't fit the bill for a, a boyfriend or a partner or whatever um or perhaps engaging in an, a a solo activity that does too. But I think Rob's point is a really crucial one that like there is a limit to, you know, how we can be badass independent women. It's like, yeah, of course. But then at the end of the day, we do all need each other. We need to feel belonging. Uh, we need to feel seen and felt. Um, but in many ways we have, you know, when you when you have a boyfriend, it's almost like this, uh, like a pocket knife, and you have all these little attachments, and mm. it fulfills all these like different a Swiss functions, Army knife. like a Swiss Army knife. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you know, it's like okay, well, I go to my partner, my my Swiss Army knife, mm -hmm. when I need to scissor something open, or when I need a corkscrew, or when I need a this. They fulfill all these different functions, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we make the mistake of saying, oh, well, I need a corkscrew but I don't have a Swiss army knife. So but maybe there's a duck. <laughs> you <laughs> want to explain you know that? A duck. Well, I think everybody gets that, right? Do the I duck, to... the corkscrew dick. Yeah. Ducks yeah. have a corkscrew shaped penises. Yeah, Did anybody like, listening yeah. not know that? Come on guys. <laughs> if you didn't know that, please let us know. <laughs> Subject line. Didn't know about duck dicks. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so trying to figure out, okay, how can I get, the corkscrew met over here by this friend, the little scissor <laughs> met over here by this family member. <laughs> okay. In a not a sexual Scissoring way. is also a sexual <laughs> act. <laughs> um, Cause I think that we, we make the mistake too of, of thinking that our partner is going to fulfill all of the, every single function perfectly for us. And they're yeah. going to cover all the bases. And 
the again the the counterpart problem is there are people out there who are in a relationship who are still feeling unhappy and unfulfilled and not to say that like you know you should feel happy just because you don't have that predicament uh i guess the the it's important though to point out that we always have that grass is greener sense and so what can you find now about your singlehood that maybe you will miss when you do get into a relationship mm-hmm. that you enjoy what are the things about being single that you uh you know you lose access to and to some extent and maybe even having almost like a funeral celebration or like a singlehood bucket list that you start to tick off those items and getting excited about that project uh and then maybe you you do find someone and you'll feel like hey I already did all my singlehood <laughs> bucket list <laughs> items <laughs> and now I can uh you know just enjoy being with this person and figure out what are the fun things about this new uh relational environment I think you the better you are at uh getting your social needs met from a diverse group of people and um, self-soothing, just being content without a partner, then the better your relationships will be when you do have a partner. That's kind of the cruel irony of it is like the less that you want it, the yeah. better you are at dealing with it when it it does become an option. Yeah. I think the last thing that I want to say about this, yeah. and it's definitely advice I need to give myself, is just continuing to develop the virtue of patience Mm -hmm. and not allowing your loneliness or your perception that you're lonely because there's anything flawed about you to ruin an otherwise fine situation of just being young and single. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, being 21, like, that's an exciting age. There's a lot of new elements of adulthood to stretch into and um so cultivating cultivating that that it just means alcohol for me what else about 21 to you is special um i think that you can rent a car at 21 mm. um there are still i think there i are question still that i'm not sure if you do yeah, I'm not sure. I I, I think it, it's it's different. It's definitely like most places anywhere you can after like 25. You know, it might vary by country though too. So sure. I don't even want to give that. I don't even want to state sure, that confidently. Sure, sure, that's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, patience is a lifelong skill because there are going to be a lot of things in your life uh, where you want it to happen right now because you're you you're like I'm ready for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but for whatever reason, it's not happening, and so it's. There's just no way around that being a frustrating and potentially dissatisfying period of your life um, if you're really fixated on something big that you want to happen. But try not to lose sight of the things that are going well um, and to continue to nurture the other areas of your life and just trust that there's nothing wrong with you that means that you're not getting into a relationship. It's just... You haven't come across someone yet that kind of mutually you fit each other's bills enough to duck bills (laughs) 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 Um, enough to have chemistry and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. I think uh, trying to figure out how you can squeeze out 10 percent more meaning satisfaction from the relationships you do have exploring Mm -hmm. the things that you've never talked about with people that you talk to regularly. Um, I mean, if you have just a professional, uh, situation with somebody like what's, what was their childhood like, or what's their sense of humor like, um, or the people that you just joke around with, what's it like for them to talk about, uh, their pain or, uh, their future or, um, just trying to stretch, those relationships a little bit, finding a new approach to them. If you've settled into a groove with people, that Mm -hmm. could also be a satisfying, um, it's not the exact same, but just something else to focus on and and feel like you're getting some type of social novelty or growth from what you already do have. That's a great advice. Thanks. I love that. Which, you know, not to insinuate that any of the things you have already said weren't I but built that up was to a good it. one yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had some I was stretching I was warming up 
first couple times I was talking. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show, guys. It is Free Advice. <laughs> With Rob Zaleski. And Morgan Beard. Free Advice. 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 All right, everyone, welcome back after that lovely musical <laughs> delight we just treated you to. Isn't it nice to get that every time you listen to the episode? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Give us your feedback. We There'll probably know. be something new next year. Yeah, that's true. We have established a rhythm now that we change, we change the color scheme, we change the theme song for mm-hmm. each season. Who knows what we're going to hit you with next time? Mm-hmm. Um, one of us might start doing an accent. Whoa. Forever? For a season. Okay. A year. Okay. Which one do you think it'll be? <laughs> Probably me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd put Most my money on. Most likely me. <laughs> that's what I'd put my money on, too. <laughs> uh, we might have new segments. Mm-hmm. Things could change, but... Yeah. Anyway, here we are now with what we got. Yep. Um, let's see, Morgan. Anything uh, top of mind you want to talk about? Yeah, I... Uh, so... We're currently recording in Los Angeles, um, as many of you know, and on June fifteenth. On June fifteenth, halfway through June. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and You're going to hear this the seventeenth or later. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, we need to refine it and go over it with a fine tooth comb, <laughs> make sure that it's perfect <laughs> by the time you hear it. <laughs> we need forty eight hours of editing time. <laughs> yeah, the hardest forty eight hours of the week. <laughs> I don't sleep. I'm just sweating. Just kidding. We barely changed anything. Um, So on Friday, we had a major new phase of things reopening from quarantine. Uh, Restaurants, bars, question mark? Restaurants were open before that. I don't mean to correct you on air, but remember coming back from your birthday, we went to a restaurant and there were people inside Yeah, that's true. That's true. I feel like a more broad amount of dining in. (laughs) More restaurants. Even more. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> new restaurants <laughs> um okay so maybe i've been living in the cave of my head for a week and a half but uh as things are reopening and i, I don't bars you know, I don't know where gyms you are. tattoo parlors tattoo parlors tattoo parlors and uh nail salons are okay are joining the fight i would really like a massage what's that when 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 can i do that friday really but i got one scheduled for thursday Oh shit! I can hook you up if you want to get in that low, in that early bird special. Potentially, depends on. The I could hook you up. Yeah. Okay. Well, Just we'll talk about know. this. Okay. Off air. Off air. Can't be giving out this info to everybody. We can't hook everyone up with massages. Oh no 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 no! Not the, not the weirdos that listen to our podcast. <laughs> um. Anyway, so <laughs> who's gonna want to touch them? With their hands. <laughs> They're probably single and gross. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve um, to be a ball of tense knots of muscle. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should probably cut all of this. Um, but in case hey we guys, don't. that was huge sarcasm. Yeah, I mean, obviously. But still felt a little to me. i um, starting to sweat. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, no, as things are reopening, I find I myself... Uh, and the conversations that I'm having with other people just kind of about, okay, where are people with, with that? Like, how are people reintegrating and what are they feeling about it? Uh, and so I kind of just wanted to broach that subject of the wide variety of potential responses to things reopening after we've been in isolation, quote unquote, for so long. I, uh, I think... There's danger in this and might look back on this time as a mistake. Mm. Um, what specifically? The uh, the here, Here's what I'm worried about. Sunk cost thinking. Well, I've already done X, so I might as well mm. every day or every week do Y because there was that one time that I had a, a compelling reason to be around a ton of people. So then like the, the slippery slope thinking of just like... Um, Returning to that. There's still just a bunch that we don't know. And um, like you and I probably both feel pretty confident that we'd survive and not suffer that much from catching COVID. Is that fair to say of you two? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But 
could be long term consequences from this. Um, apparently, it does things to your little blood vessels Aww. in your kidneys, all the tiny ones. Oh shit! Yeah. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to be in my 50s like, no, you guys go ahead. I caught COVID when I was 29, and so I still <laughs> got to take it easy. <laughs> I don't you think that there are, I mean, yes, I, I understand the fear of the long-term effects from something like this, but don't you think that there are many other decisions that you make, and maybe this is part of the slippery slope thinking, where it's like, well, you know, I've kind of already like, screwed the pooch here, screwed the pooch there. I mean, you you can't, can you really live your life that way? Preventing yourself from all of these micro accumulations of damage. Like, isn't that how we age? Like, isn't that what aging is? Um, I think we do. And if it's a culturally accepted norm, like not having lead pipes or even neither you nor I smoke cigarettes, but if we were amongst a social group where everybody did, it'd be a lot likelier that we would. Um, that those little things that we kind of do and we just don't notice it when we're doing it because it's it's normal. Or like, oh yeah, everybody knows not to do that thing. We don't eat trans fats because <laughs> you probably don't remember when they were removed from lots of foods or maybe you do. But um, type, it just becomes invisible. Mm. when we are doing those dodging maneuvers for all those little agers that you're talking about. Yeah. But so don't you think that there are just for everyone that we find out and eventually implement a policy or a social uh, ID narrative that we shouldn't have it and change is affected, yada, yada. Meanwhile, we're all breathing air that is apparently unsafe. <laughs> like, <laughs> in Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, we're still figuring it out on this. I guess yeah. it's like it hasn't, we haven't decided and there are camps and people are, are shifting attitudes. And I think a lot of it is just looking at myself, just justifying whatever I've done. Yeah. And then once I've done it, it's like, okay, well, it's not particularly rational. It's not yeah. science driven and it seems hard to even act that way. Yeah. So I just want to acknowledge the challenge of making decisions and weighing like, oh, the mental health benefit of seeing a friend and hugging them instead of like staying six feet away the entire time that I see them. And um, it's difficult. What I, what I think I know is it's better to be outside. Um, it's better to wear masks. This spreads in droplets of moisture that are expelled when we speak, when we sing, when we laugh, when we cough or sneeze. All the fun stuff. Anything, maybe even a little when you breathe, but especially if you're talking, um, mm -hmm. probably the louder or more forceful you're speaking, the more of those come out. But they're like they're not even visible, um, and you want to avoid that. And it's better if there's a breeze. I heard a suggestion <laughs> on the daily that the New York subways and buses should take all the windows off. Whoa! Yeah, even in the winter, just to keep the air circulating, and then it'll be safer to ride. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, right. I thought it. I feel like a image subway like. without. Yeah, creepy. It'd be spooky. I lived in it? New York for like five and a half years, and I definitely have a visceral reaction to the idea of like when. Because think about when you're like fucking. You know, you get stuck in a tunnel, and you're stuck there for a while, and, and then you're just kind of thinking coming through the windows. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I guess invasion. they wouldn't. I guess they wouldn't. Might, though. But I don't know. Can they climb? Bats? They have bats in there? I don't think they have. I don't know for sure. You're more of a New Yorker than I am, yeah, but no, I, I don't, don't recall so, but... seeing bats in the subway. You'd yeah. think it'd be a good spot for them, though. Somebody suggest that to bats. <laughs> Is there a bat suggestion box? I think they're happiest in their caves. Probably. Huge. Millions of them in some caves. That's like New York City's of bats. In these caves that people don't go to. Maybe they just like being away from people. I don't know. This isn't the bad podcast. Let's get <laughs> off of this topic, please. Um, but yeah, so I, yeah, what you're saying, I guess, is like each person kind of has these ideas that they carry around of what can I do to mitigate risk? And then we all just kind of operate on those. And at the end of the day, I do think so much of our decision making is just emotional anyway. And then we come up with some bullshit later. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I think it's important to be uh, respectful of 
people's uh, decision to be cautious about mm. this yeah. more than it is important to be respectful of people's decision to be cavalier. <laughs> <laughs> if you ha- if you're going to lean one way or another about how you approach other people, but that I- I'm trying to be um, open mind, just to trying to be tolerant of other people's choices, unless yeah. they're like. I haven't. I can't think of anybody who's gone super in the direction of like being cavalier and trying to. If somebody's trying to get COVID, then I think that's a bad call. <laughs> there, there were camps of people that you know wanted to contract it early so they could travel the world or hmm. gain the immunity. Yeah, I have a theory based on absolutely nothing that I already had it, but you know, I think that's wishful get the thinking. Antibodies test. Yeah, I could at this point. At this point, it would probably be worth it because I would assume it would point to that I have had it. I hope, I don't know, whatever. Also, we're not certain that it grants immunity to Mm -hmm. have had it or for how long, but probably for at least a year. Yeah. There's another area where it's like, we have to just develop patience because we're not going to have those answers for a long time, or we're not going to like reliably be beyond this for Mm -hmm. a while. Um, But in terms of, in terms of you personally mm. and reintegrating, what what's your plan? Hmm. Um, I will try to stay out of any situations where I'm indoors around strangers that aren't wearing a mask. Um, and if I'm outdoors around strangers, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep trying to stay six feet away if, if they're not wearing a mask um yeah. i'll see friends i think i i should have more conversations with friends about um how many people what their level of risk is and try and mm-hmm. like but i'm not like asking people how many contacts you know i'm not doing that contact counting yeah. that i was a couple months ago um I think that would be smart, but I don't even know where my criteria would be like, oh, you've seen 100 people in the last two weeks? Uh, Is that my cutoff? I don't know where my... (laughs) Basically, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Good, good. I want other people to also not know. Okay. I I don't know. (laughs) Why do we want that? I don't know. I, I wish for you guys to know and have certainty in your decisions and sleep comfy at night without dread and anxiety about it here's yeah. here's what i, I uh, intend to get tested more often mm. is monthly or every time that i see myself is in a high risk position or just when i get yeah. minor cold like symptoms okay so and, sort of std protocol somewhat yeah i guess so and um also i want to normalize canceling things because you wake up feeling like a scratchy throat or a fever or Oh yeah, that's, but like there's, it's often minor and I'm not sure whether I have these things until a day or two later and it's gotten worse. And then I'm like, oh yeah, it started that day. But the day, mm-hmm. that day, I wasn't really sure if it's just like, I don't know, sleep very well or. Right. Is it, right. So. And sometimes you're contagious for something before you even, you know, know that you for have For sure. Symptom, yeah. So. With COVID it's been proven that people are contagious before they have symptoms, but any kind of symptoms in a person canceling because they feel a little unwell, I think I want to just normalize that and give them the green light thank them for mm. being careful in that way yeah there there are definitely some things where i'm like ooh, i hope this uh change is sustained like i kind of like not like having that six feet around me outside kind of bubble i i've been enjoying that like you know when you're crossing someone on the sidewalk whatever just or at least that there's not some kind of for me it lifts the expectation that i have to like engage with them yeah, because I do find that that stuff adds up and is taxing. And I have this weird sense that I have to like greet everyone that I pass. <laughs> I, I don't know where that came from. Um, like I owe them something. Um, but so, yeah, just a little bit more like social distance or, you know, not feeling like I'm disrespecting someone by avoiding them. Mm-hmm. I hope that carries over somewhat. Um, I hope in terms of online dating, FaceTiming first before meeting up in person. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes you know you want to assess out the chemistry in person. But sometimes it's like, well, 
I'm sitting on my couch right now and like we might as well might as well find out if there's something that's just absolutely going to be a non-starter without having to <laughs> go out into the world. Right. But but I'm also excited. I'm excited to go out into the world. Um I I've been I've like I think I've allowed this virus and the slow d- uh phasal dis, uh, discontinuation of quarantine to be an excuse for me not to go out of my way to plan anything, which is like left me kind of uh, just feeling a little bit socially disconnected sure. still where I'm just like, Oh, I think other people are doing fun things. And I'm sitting here like telling myself I can't. <laughs> it's probably the biggest abrupt social disconnection in all of human history, mm. given that population growth is, is how yeah. it is. And there's more people today than ever, but yeah, yeah, you're not alone in feeling that. Um, I'm excited for more things to move outdoors mm-hmm. kind of because of the novelty and because I like being outdoors around dusk or at nighttime when it's warm in Southern California. Um, things like drive in movie theaters. I haven't been to one yet, but I really hope that expands and (laughs) i get to do that and um eating outside is nice uh i imagine whenever i go to a party again it's likely to be outdoors only Mm. except for maybe the bathroom i don't know people might just have to start peeing in bushes more i think (laughs) that'd be a a cool if that if there were like special bushes for pee and they were marked and People, there's like an accepted way that you wouldn't get um, charged with public indecency. Yeah. Or, and you know, there would just be lots of available disposable funnels for women. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I forgot about I that, know you that did. portion of the population. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't really notice when other people have to pee. It's pretty much just me. <laughs> it's, it's only, well, that's I'm the only, only signal you should be getting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd be a terrible superpowers i can feel it when other people have to pee (laughs) um that would just be constant (laughs) irritation yeah uh i hope people get more expressive with other parts of their body given that their like smiles are pretty gone Mm -hmm. um so if we can do some more hand and shoulder gestures stuff with our our hips or just whole body expressions for what we used to do with our is you, Morgan just I raised her eyebrows, eyebrows up. Yeah, like a surprise face. Yeah. You can do a lot with the top half of your face, I suppose, but it'd be cool that if some new body movements take off or <laughs> ones that we already have yeah. get more widely adopted. Yeah. Thumbs up and thumbs down. I feel like we had... <laughs> Was that like a choo-choo, like a train horn? What was that? It's like, a, oh, yeah. Okay, so um, it's kind of like pulling a slot machine lever, you might imagine. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. do that, like, yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. Celebratory, like a like a tooth-showing smile. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, I feel like when we first... <laughs> Yes. No, I'm trying to make like a completely separate point and then Rob just keeps throwing big gestures at me, which I appreciate. I love the energy. Thank you. Um, But they are mildly distracting. Uh, Stop. <laughs> like when we first went into the quarantine and sort of the top half, I would say, I feel like people were very fixated on, ooh, how now we have this big social problem. How are we going to get creative in order to stay connected? Mm-hmm. And I feel like people were very motivated to think outside the box. And I guess I have a slight fear that once we are able to frequent all of these spaces that we were in before. Frequent. Mm-hmm. What? You think it's frequent? I've just never heard of frequent. Really? I don't think, yeah. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, that you go to, stop by. Frequent. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, Would you say frequently? No, I say frequently. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. It's just how I've always said it. People give me shit for some words. Go on. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's cool. Um, I feel like you wouldn't be doing your job as my humorous friend if you didn't give me shit for certain things like that. Okay. Um, Keep it up then. <laughs> that that now that we are kind of going back in, in a lot of places, this is not true for every place. Like I, I talked to my aunt recently who is in Arizona and their government did not 
obey the, the new quarantine hotspot. or lockdown. Yeah, exactly. So Phoenix is like their hospitals are at capacity. Mm. Um, so they're going into like more lockdown. So this doesn't apply to everyone, but I do, I do have a fear that we will, you know, default to old behaviors and not continue to stretch ourselves outside of the box about how can we reimagine society to be a more connected place. Mm. Cause I think that was starting to happen in a really meaningful way. Um, and I just, I hope that that state of mind continues of how can we make this better? You could be a warrior in that battle. I could. Well, I can. I'll try and join you. Oh, thanks. Look out for ways to find unexpected uh, connection and help for strangers and spread. Anytime you can make a person uh, re- reinstill faith in humanity and have them feeling good about humans, that's a good cause. Yeah. People that, those moments. That's the other thing that I feel like came out of this is like it felt so uniting. And maybe some of my fear is of that being lost as well of like now, okay, now we can go back to all of these social settings we used to frequent (laughs) and, and we are then again subdivided into having very different experiences and we lose sight of this uniting factor, this, this common enemy that we all had to face. I don't think totally, but I do think collective memory really fades quite fast. Yeah. Well, yeah, I I worry that it will be dividing, just especially as people have different concerns um, based on the information they have about the virus until there's a vaccine that's widespread. um, we're going to be at different levels of risk. And I, yeah, I think it's really important to tolerate people's people being more careful than you are not trying to convince them otherwise. Yeah. I, I definitely recognize the entire time of coronavirus that I have been one of the um, less, I'm not that risk averse. Um, and so I've tried to be given your social circle in LA. So there's other places where there you probably sure. would have been one of the careful ones. Potentially. Yeah. I mean, I think that, yeah, I think it's a product of, you know, who I'm around and who I'm trying to respect and who I want to like spend time with. And then therefore I'm going to, you know, in some ways impart my um, behavior on, but uh, I, told, I don't know what the fuck I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I I think reintegrating okay. I will apply the same level of respect for for people that you know wish to cuz I mean I want people to respect me when I decide for no good reason other than I don't feel like it that I don't want to hang out anyway. Mm-hmm. Sort of like what you were saying about having more of a sense of like just the appropriateness of not going out when you're sick. Mm-hmm. I think I would like to have the same kind of allowance for how I'm feeling about my mental health. Like sometimes I'm just like, I can't imagine myself going from where I am now, the headspace and physical space into a large social setting. And there's really no other excuse quote unquote, other than I just want to stew in this by myself. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I would think it would be extremely hypocritical of me to, judge someone for their for 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 a precaution that may be more tangible <laughs> right right so well uh you want to get some more questions in here i sure do let's do it okay um here we go dull corgi <laughs> says question about co-ed showers 18 female mm. that means that dull corgi is 18 years old and female Dull. A dull corgi. Dull corgi. Okay. I thought it was dull at first. Dull. Okay. So this is like a boring corgi. Yes. Okay. But you'll quickly learn. Not that boring. Okay. Can't wait. In the past years, I've made it a habit to masturbate in the shower. Oh. I do it almost only there. And it has basically become a part of my shower routine. Mm. 
After summer break, I'm going to move into a dorm for college. Turns out, all their showers are co-ed. <laughs> what am I supposed to do about it? One thing I think is interesting about this question is that it's not, the question isn't, okay, I used to masturbate in the shower. Now, how do I deal with group showers? The, the fact that it's co-ed they're is not, what's dissuading you from masturbating. They're not group showers. You know what I mean? Like... The bathroom is co-ed, but I'm sure there are stalls. There's no way yeah, that yeah, it's of like course. boys and girls have to be in one room together looking at each other while they're what showering. I, what I mean is... <laughs> Men and women. Sorry. Those are 18. Sorry. <laughs> um, what? Fair, very fair point. Okay, what, you, what, what I meant was if you're going to shower in a room at all with other people, why would it matter uh, whether that whether this auditory spectator is a, a male or a female? You know what I mean? It just, does it make them uncomfortable? Does it make dull corgi more uncomfortable? I think so. Okay. I think um, the thought of somebody that's a potential partner or um, the object of your fantasy Mm. entering into that bathroom and discovering you. I feel like that's great fodder for masturbation personally. (laughs) Well. (laughs) But... uh, yeah, no, I mean, I I don't know. I don't think I would. I also don't know the sexual norms of the area in the college in particular. Mm, it could be um, something that she's shamed for doing or that other kids say is weird. Other adults, sorry, they're 18. Um, but, <laughs> the, the, but how would anyone know? Can't Like, it could be quiet. You could change your routine for it to be, like, noise. quieter. Noise is maybe she moans or makes other sounds of ecstasy. Yeah. Or there's some physical you know flapping noise or maybe there's a toy involved that makes it <laughs> right. a vibratory right. noise or right. some kind of motorized yeah um and time of shower you know yeah. somebody comes in while she's already in the shower and then takes their entire shower and leaves while she's still showering and a rumor starts <laughs> i don't know how rumorous this place is <laughs> yeah um right. you're not going to be alone in this issue that's I'm speaking directly yeah. to Del Corgi now. Yeah. Um, college is very disruptive for masturbation. And this is why college kids often have a reputation for being so horny. I think is because they have roommates all of a sudden you probably end up with a roommate, not really privacy. Yeah. So you, it's hard to do it in the room. I guess you just yeah. like, you become more of an op- opportunistic feeder where <laughs> you start to learn when your roommate's going to be gone and you do it more in um, in the room at that point. Or you do it in the shower and then when someone else enters, you know, you, you can find that the bathroom is empty at certain points of the day. And it's like, oh, 2 o'clock, nobody's really showering. Okay, 2 p.m., That's I'll give it a go. And then somebody comes in and you stop. Maybe they just use the toilet and then they leave and then you get back to it. Yeah. Or maybe the moment's gone or maybe they're in the shower and so you decide to stop altogether. Yeah. It's treacherous. It is tough. Yeah. I, I remember, I mean, I was an only child and then I went to college and then suddenly people were around all the time. And I, not in terms of masturbation, but in general, that was just a very tough transition to me because I felt like suddenly I had no alone time, whereas my previous problem was I had too much alone time. And now it was like I had no reprieve or time to myself. I found it really exhausting. So like Rob was saying, I think that there will be a lot of similar types of adjustments that you're going to have to make. And so I think it's up to you to decide, OK, what what is my definition of masturbation now? Does it mean that I have to finish? Does it mean that I maybe I just fantasize maybe i am not comfortable engaging in any type of sexually stimulating activity when i know there's a threat of someone walking in um in which case i would assume you have to kind of adapt what what that ritual is going to look like um and it sucks you know it sucks to to have found a place where you feel comfortable enough and safe enough to indulge in this behavior and and now you're going to lose it or it's going to change mm-hmm. to some extent. So, yeah, I think experimentation is really going to be key. Yeah, and talking about it with other freshmen, there's going to be other people who are going through this very situation. I don't know if I would feel comfortable doing that. It depends on the person but, and, yeah, and what kind of things you've already discussed with them. But once you've tiptoed in that direction and find out somebody's 
cool, mm-hmm. I'm putting in quotes here, mm-hmm. if somebody's cool about that type of topic, then discussing it with them, maybe you'll find out yeah. there's like a a handicapped private bathroom in one of the dorms. There's, that's a place where you can lock the door. There's um, other rooms like that that aren't perfect, but they're available. Yeah, I, I also, I don't know what your... Uh, particular masturbation technique is if it already in, involves Probably a toy. Probably has to do but, with the water given the shower. Yeah. Um, the Perhaps you could invest in some kind of waterproof toy that would allow you to get to where you need to go quicker and so you don't have to spend as much time in sort of the, the preamble mm. phase. You don't have to position yourself any certain way. Um, you know, just something that Something that just kind of uh, accelerates the process, potentially. Mm-hmm. Good luck to you. Yeah. Um, hope you write us back in the fall <laughs> with what you've learned if you do come up with a solution to this. Absolutely. Yeah. Abs- and, you know, there's always sex. <laughs> there's always Which sex. Which you can also but, get interrupted and walked in like on. <laughs> that has its own, yeah, its own set of issues and just can you gotta involve another person with all their own needs and like i think that this is what i mean no, you're right it's not really this an acceptable substitute in my no, mind no 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 you know it's not dependable or uh for a number of reasons just like it seems like a different thing to me i, I hope it that, is a different thing yeah. i'm definitely not saying replace your masturbation practice with sex mm-hmm. but i am saying there will be an influx of Avail- potential available partners and so i would i would encourage you to explore that yeah you're comfortable okay thank you dull corgi um moving on to young black female 04's question is this friendship worth it mm. it's late i'm currently writing to the abyss which is the internet because I've been really conflicted on this friendship I have. I always used to excuse this person's distant and cold behavior as being part of their personality, but as time has gone on, I find myself being a victim of their microaggressions. Mm. The person kind of finds ways to belittle me, like trying to make fun and tease my religious beliefs, telling me I'm too naive and being passive-aggressive on text and on group chats we're on. There's so many other things, but despite the negatives, we have a lot in common and a good friendship. It's just exhausting when that person acts like that, because I don't really retaliate, and when I do, I'm made to seem like I'm overreacting. My other friends aren't like this towards me at all. It's getting to a point where I feel drained and used, and I'm starting to want to keep my distance for that person. It would be a shame because me and that person have had many good times and shared many good moments, but from time to time I feel undermined by that person. Please let me know what you think, and any advice will be welcomed. (sighs) That is a tough situation. Um, I think that you did a really good job of presenting the variables in a way that's balanced, like acknowledging that you have uh, a lot of history with this person and that there are definite pros to having them in your life uh, and that they've had a special role, you know, on an ongoing basis, but also that there are times where you just can't tolerate it, where you just feel drained um, and don't want to engage with that person. I think that's a really important response to stay in touch with and to monitor. And so I think ultimately we're not going to give you a black and white, like, yes, definitely dump this friend. No, definitely stick with it because it's worth the pain you're experiencing. I think it's going to have to be something that you are evaluating on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a period of a month where you say, okay, I'm going to document, you know, how do I feel overall when I'm with this person? So, you know, maybe there were five times where you felt really undermined and drained and one time where you feel like you had a really fun, enjoyable hangout. And maybe that ratio doesn't actually work for you anymore. Right. I think sometimes we make the mistake of comparing the entirety of a friendship to what are we actually experiencing in the present. Uh, and, And people change over time. And so it's possible that 
something in your dynamic has shifted. Maybe this person is jealous of you because, mm-hmm. you know, it, obviously there's something going on there consciously or unconsciously where, where this particular friend has a some kind of bone to pick with you because mm-hmm. it's just not it's not what you want. That's not the right way to treat someone. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's tough getting that feedback that they think you're overreacting. Yeah. Um, that's emotional manipulation on both yeah. sides. I mean, I don't know. It It's possible that you have, um, some thing about this person that you're unaware of that does cause you to react stronger than you would to other people. And you haven't expressed, mm. it could be a, a, any number of things, some form of, uh, jealousy or just one instance that something that you let go that you never told them about from a long time ago that you're still holding on to and it means that everything else that they do that reminds you of that event Mm. um seems to uh inflate in your mind Um, it could also be other relationships that you've had in the past like with parents yes exactly they might have a, a certain mannerism that reminds you of someone who was mean to you in the past or just a certain topic that they bring up that you're more sensitive about than or yeah from a past experience yeah it's a tough thing to know exactly um i want to advise you to not you don't have to make it a binary if it's not an extreme circumstance it doesn't sound like this person is being um outright abusive to you or being terrible to you it's like minor things that it's, it's little things that get under your skin microaggressions as you're calling them um if you can talk to them directly about those things uh, and ask like, what does it, what does it seem like I'm being too um, sensitive about? What is their anger reaction coming from? And then seeing if you can craft your message in a way that they um, can tolerate. But asking for the things that you want them to do or not do, and um, understanding that they might not give you those things, but that's that's the best is to try to ask for what you want from them. Um, and ideally in private, because there may be a pride thing of, of them not wanting to be criticized in front of other people. Like you're talking about the group chats and things. Um, if you can ask for what you want away from the view of others, they might not have their uh, pride hurt as much. And they might be more willing to work with you and tell them what you like about them at the beginning of that conversation too, I think to set the stage for them to be receptive for that. And then, you can take it situationally, like if it's when there are attractive uh, new people around, is is this friend of yours maybe put you down more or it hurts more? And then you don't have to invite them to that type of situation. Um, or is it some some class, something you're competitive about? Maybe you you both play a sport and when that comes up, they get – it could be just like in a certain domain mm. that um, – you don't want to hang out with them anymore, but there are still others that work fine. Yeah, I think that's a really good angle to think about it. Uh, I would add too that maybe if you're experiencing uh, a particular amount of overwhelm or feeling drained right now, maybe there's a way to take a break from this friend. And so, not so. So one thing you could do, as Rob's suggesting, is is sort of break from them in different domains. Another thing is you can take a total break from them for a set period of time while you kind of lick your wounds, heal, re-energize, and maybe do some personal investigating of like, what is this person triggering in me? And then come back into that relationship feeling a little bit more uh, grounded and less less triggered by those things. Um, Take some time and... Even imagine, run kind of like a friendship simulation with this person in your brain and think about, okay, if if what variables, if certain variables were extracted or added, like, you know, they didn't do this or they did do that, what would the friendship feel like? Would that, would that feel balanced to me? Um, or right now, maybe it just feels like I just need a break mm-hmm. and I just need to put this person out of my mind for a little while and perhaps there's a kind way that you can explain to them. Uh, again, it depends. It depends how comfortable you are with this friend to actually engage in these kind of conversations. 
and I hope that since it does seem like you have some history and some rapport, that maybe this is something that you can stretch into, starting to have these more honest dialogues. Um, And I think it's a great test, too, if you do try to have these dialogues in a way that's uh, as as non-aggressive as possible because sometimes you can they can get defensive and then you're off on a total wrong foot but if you choose a sort of neutral emotionally neutral moment and you present it in a way that's just from a place of love from a place of trying to preserve the friendship and being kind and just reporting honestly how certain things make you feel yeah if this friend reacts really poorly to that and makes fun of you makes things feel like they're your fault that's a really big signal that it might be time to let this friend go again permanently or for a short period of time. Because I think, I think that protecting yourself from that behavior is, is going to be really important to resolving the, the primary symptom that you're having right now of, of just kind of being over it. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta put something in between this really hurtful stimulus and, and your heart that you keep putting into this relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's also a good time to uh, reinvest in other friendships that you have around you. And maybe if you have a mutual friend, I mean, I don't necessarily think like go out and gossip a bunch about them, but I think there's a way that you can approach the topic with someone else who might know this friend well, or maybe even better than you do potentially to, to get another angle on why is this, dynamic cropping up between the two of you um the gossip advice that carla mclaren gives is to go into those conversations with the intent to discover a new way of dealing with this person a new way that um helps you both relate better rather than try to ruin their reputation or get someone else to dislike them or build sides and teams um if you notice this happening more and more with your friend, it's possible something is changing within you where you have a higher standard of how you want to be treated from other people or something's going on with them and they're acting out. And um, it might be helpful to to try and soften and ask them like, hey, are, are you in some kind of pain? To look at their, if they're hurting someone else, they're probably hurting themselves. They, they mm-hmm. feel pain themselves and- that can help um, can help their words sting a little bit less for you if you identify that with their help or without their help. Um, if you had found out that I don't know a relative had just died or they had just been denied some scholarship or something, it might make it a little bit more tolerable in the moment. And maybe they're dealing with something chronic. Um, and showing that you care about that could. Uh, get them to trust you more and make them not want to be mean to you as much anymore. Maybe they're holding on to something from a long time ago that you did unknowingly. And that's something that they're afraid to talk about or don't even realize. But if they knew that you cared and um, wanted to help them be in less pain, then maybe that's another way that you could smooth things over with this friend. Yeah. I I mean, I think that we've, uh, given a number of good suggestions for yeah. how to dive deeper into the problem and figure out w- more information that's going to help her make a decision about it. But I think we wouldn't be we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't say hmm. it's okay to end the relationship with this friend. Mm-hmm. Like that is completely within your rights to do if you feel like. You know, you're you're not getting your needs met from this friendship and you're continually sort of the butt of jokes and made to feel a certain way um, that that is always going to be a personal decision. Uh, no one outside of you can tell you, well, it shouldn't feel this bad or you shouldn't uh, set this kind of boundary. So. I also like to look at I also like to look at any issue within a relationship uh through the angle of what is your relationship with this person showing you about your relationship with yourself in what ways are you unconsciously um uh perhaps 
antagonizing yourself, not allowing yourself to be entitled to certain feelings, whatever the problems you have with this friend, just, you know, kind of switch the pronouns and see if there's anything to be found in that kind of an investigation. Not to say that there is uh, fault in you, um, but just as an exercise that always helps me to illuminate a different angle to a problem mm-hmm. of, of exploring, well, what ways is this friend uh, a mirror f- into something about myself? Yeah. But you can always step away. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay to do. It just may be tricky if you're on all these group chats and there's a uh, existing social circle mm. that means maybe not there's this person also comes with other friends and that makes it harder and then i'd say uh, consider the option of just finding a tolerable distance to keep from this person you don't have to be as close as you were i uh i wonder if this is a uh, and on average a gendered difference of uh women breaking up with friends more mm. clean like uh fully get, cutting them out of their lives more than men i think tend to just like drift mm. and tolerate each other but just like speak less to each other but be able to um have you noticed that at all i don't Could know and i don't think i'm a good person like i don't <laughs> i don't sure. know if i have enough female sure. friendship data to really contribute but um yeah i've I've been broken up with as a friend. Um, I've drifted. I, yeah, I've done all of the above with like varying, you know, success yeah. levels, I guess. But I, I, I guess for speaking to some gender differences that I observe, I mean, women tend to have more uh, of a personal, emotional like potential to wound each other i Mm. think and that's a more kind of natural way for them to engage with each other uh if there's an underlying tension or something so maybe that necessitates more of a need to just be like i can't fucking deal with this anymore and get them out of your life whereas like with men maybe it's just that stuff isn't overt and that stuff isn't like attacks aren't like launched on them in as visceral of a way Mm mm-hmm um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry you're going through this. It, it sucks. And, you know, we all, we all have friendships that change and shift because we change and shift. Yeah. And it's great when those go in a good direction and you guys can connect more and evolve together. But a lot of times it doesn't. A lot of times people go their separate ways and find, wow, we're actually a lot more different than we were in, you know, college when, when the things that we were relating about were more similar, when we hadn't, before we had, had chosen, uh, more specific life directions for ourselves. Yeah. And so whatever, whatever the situation is with you and this friend, um, just keep in mind that you are not losing access to the feeling of friendship, the feeling mm-hmm. of relating to someone or the else, memories the commonality uh, with that friend yeah. when things were good. You said you were worried about losing that. Yeah. You yeah. still have those. You can also make new ones. Yeah. And maybe you can even take some time to document those things. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can, that can help sort of solidify a little bit and reconnect you with the fact that like your experience of those memories is the thing that's valuable. Um, mm-hmm. Because the memories are already th- in the past, mm-hmm. um, and I would I would hate for you to feel so drained or wounded by this friend that you were hesitant to pursue other connections, or you didn't have the energy to pursue other connections. Because you know, I think that you <laughs> think that you deserve to have a friend or a network of friends that doesn't inflict microaggressions on you, right? And I don't know if that's specifically a reference to like racism or just, you know, a thousand death by a thousand paper cuts sort of thing where there are just these little things, little fissures. But either way, if you're noticing it, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think that you deserve the protection or environmental change or whatever it's going to take to resolve that so that you can function better not just within this relationship but in the rest of your life because i'm sure it's having an impact there too yeah so i hope that you make a change that helps you to feel more 
energized and optimistic and calm. Yeah. And if you try something and uh, you get some feedback out of it, we'd, we'd love to hear what you did, how it went. Yeah. You can write us at freeadvicepodcast at gmail.com. Good luck. Yeah. All right, listeners. Um, hope you're enjoying summer as it, <laughs> as it comes to you in whatever form it does where you live. Yeah. This has been Free Advice, episode 58, <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan, for being here. Thank you, you too, to the Rob. People who asked you their too. questions. Was there any um, was there any question today that you felt particularly connected to either the way it was asked or the answer, or felt that there was like a personal relevance for you? Mm-hmm. I never asked this of you, so it's like okay, if not, but I felt compelled. I think all of them. I could. Yeah. I found a way to relate to. What yeah. was the first question again? The first one was uh, about being single and wanting to yeah. be in a relationship. Yeah. Um, that one just made me feel happy that I am okay being single right now and just not like, yeah, not feeling agitated in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all of them remind me of times in my life that they're all relatable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. You. Um, that one, the first one. Yeah, the first one. Em- the first one resembled our conversation from. Before. Yeah, it did. It did, and it and it definitely like whenever I get the opportunity to touch in with like what is what is someone else dealing with that's analogous to what I'm dealing with, I can advise that other person from a place that I don't necessarily have as easy of access to when I'm kind of just in my own shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and reminding myself about patience and reminding myself that there's no shame in Mm -hmm. being single, uh, even when I acknowledge that I no longer want to be single. I think that's important because the other thing is like fucking, if you really, if the only goal you had was just, I don't want to be single, you know, you, you could go out and just sort of like check that box some for some people more easily than others but it's not that i don't think it, that's the whole issue i think that it's not that we just don't want to be single it's that we want to find a relationship that is really meaningful and fulfilling sure. with someone who we're compatible with and you know all these different specifications get built into that and that's part of what makes it so special when you do find someone who is that complementary of a gem mm-hmm. um but during the period before that happens, <laughs> yeah, it can it can be uncomfortable and we can be very alone in our own thoughts and, and stew in them and exacerbate the situation. Um, so, yeah, I definitely I connected with that a lot. And I mean, I masturbated in the shower today. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I had a great connection to that question as well. <laughs> uh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Free advisees. That's it for us this week. I hope you enjoy the show. You can always write to us at freeadvicepodcast at gmail.com. At gmail.com. If you want to let us know about your shower masturbation, mm-hmm. your singlehood, your friendships, we're all about it. Oh, yeah. And stay cool. <laughs> all right, everybody. Good night. 